Hey y'all, it's your girl Jackie from Hey Jacket Beauty, and as you guys will notice right away, I have a guest with me. Hey! This is my friend Isabel. <laughs> so here I am with my friend Isabel, and we're gonna talk about being beginners at YouTube and what you guys will need, and some good old steps on how to get started basically, and how to continue your channel, not just like start and then quit after two videos. Yep. I mean, if that happens, it happens, but yeah. So then if you guys want to see more, then keep on watching. Also, I always do this. Sometimes I feel weird doing this, but still. Do it. Like, you guys can subscribe. And not only to me, but to Bo's channel. Because she has a music channel. Hey, that's... It's great. Don't be shame about that. Yeah, no. I should do that more often. Yes. I'll take advice from you. Hit the bell so you get notifications when we upload, and yeah. So on her channel, we did a mukbang, but we were eating more of the savory, dinnery options. Mm -hmm. um, we're now having dessert, so we have these haagen vanilla almond bars, which are delicious, pineapple, and two cookies that were left over from... Me and my husband making them early this week. <laughs> I had them before dinner. Yeah, they're so good. <laughs> and they're not even anything special. They're just Nestle cookies. We will be eating while giving you advice. And then I guess I'll just give a little warning if you guys don't like hearing people eat or chomp on things. And this might not be the video for you. I'll just leave little bits of the advice in the info section so you don't have to watch and torture yourself. First thing, or the first tip for starting your own YouTube channel um, we both were kind of talking about this earlier, but like to start a channel, you should have an idea of what you want to do and have like something you're, I love how people always say, have something you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. What's your passion project? You know? No, I agree. I think that if you you really have to isolate like what your, um, what your goal is, mm -hmm. like the end goal of all this, not that you have to know every nook and cranny of it, all of it. But if you're just wanting like a single video to go viral just for kicks and giggles, then that's one thing. But mm -hmm. if you're wanting to sustain a channel that's both able to attract subscribers and also be somewhat life giving for you because just it's quite an investment mm -hmm. to do it well, mm -hmm. you should probably choose something that means something to you. So if that's a skill set that you have to offer, if it's a, a content area that you're wanting to explore, um, it, I don't know, whatever, whatever you're offering on your channel, you should at least be persuaded by it. Cause I mean, like having to self promote and ask people to subscribe and stick around and that's follow you on other, yeah, on other social media platforms. That's especially difficult to do if you yourself don't believe in your project. Mm -hmm. And I think what's important on top of that is to definitely have the passion, the zeal, but also to have the character behind it to, you know, have a good work ethic and to kind of be willing to grow and see things through. Because I'm a planner, so do what fits you. If you're a planner, what could help? And what I did was I just literally planned out three to four months worth of content and I knew like, I just knew wow. the titles of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I know I want to do this, 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 and this. And then since then, I think I've been consistent till the end of summer nice. like <laughs> i'm already impressed <laughs> yeah no since september it's kind of just been whatever and i'm trying to get back on a plan because my schedule's changing but mm -hmm. i think it's absolutely like really great to just do whatever fits you if you want if you're a planner then plan it out don't feel any shame about knowing ahead of time what you're going to record um if you're not and you're just more of a spur of the moment person and you're not worried about that necessarily like what may or may happen with your channel with that you just do what fits you i think yeah. you know knowing who you are knowing why you're doing something is definitely the first step and where you hope the channel mm -hmm. is, like your intent for it will really shape the amount of time and planning you put into it mm -hmm. i mean if it's really just a space for you to put down or put onto the internet your ideas or your um your processes or your music mm -hmm. more of like a diary a public mm -hmm. diary then that's that if, if the goal is to uh share with what and grow like a larger audience then with that goal i think comes uh a, a, a need <laughs> mm -hmm. a need for a more <laughs> these are intentional nice. plan mm -hmm. um one so that the people who are going to be tuning in that they have an idea of where you're going but also for your sake so it's something sustainable to you mm -hmm. um because the fly I mean, I don't know my songs. 
mm-hmm. like months out, but yeah. I have planned a schedule of which I'm when I'm going to record and when I'm going to try to do collaborations with other people, mm-hmm. um, just to make sure it's possible. Because it's really easy to have ideas, but if there isn't some sort of tangible plan around it, mm-hmm. the likelihood of those ideas never never coming to fruition mm-hmm. is really high. So yeah. like, if it really matters to you, then there will be a degree of planning necessary. Mm-hmm. And also too, I guess, to go along with this question, you guys already know my idea with this YouTube channel. Um, even though I am a graphic designer and I, you know, do a lot of music and I have dance and all this kind of stuff, those are all, of course, great little venues I could have gone into with YouTube. I was really, really passionate about my hair and I still am where, you know, I was relaxed and I'm natural and I wanted to explore that more in depth. And I felt like YouTube afforded me more opportunities where I could not only explore and share my journey, but also, um just document it for myself Mm -hmm. um and so to kind of go along with that since you know my idea what was your idea behind your youtube channel like like what me what was your big why and well initially i'm from uh maui and most of my family not all my younger sister lives up here with her husband up here in oregon but initially i i started it as a means of sharing music with them so Mm -hmm. that's why i think like the goal is really it shifts how I spend my time. So at the start, it was just, I'm writing music. I want to share it with them. They're also musicians. I want to hear what they think about it. It just was more relational just between the family members. Mm -hmm. And then because I also am a teacher, um, it kind of morphed into, um, because I didn't have a whole lot of free time Mm. and an, an ability to go out and like hit up all the small gigs and try to get on singer songwriter bills and stay up to late hours filling in like half an hour slots I was like this this might be the means by which I can share my music and document it uh-huh. and hopefully grow a listening audience until something frees up in my schedule where I can mm-hmm. also do it more actively in a live setting mm-hmm. so yeah first it was more like personal diary and then it morphed into more of I'm writing this music. I would like to share it with people. I'd like to get better at communicating what I mean and what I feel through Mm -hmm. song, with my instrument, with my voice. So a lot of it too originally was finding a way to express my my adoration in worship Mm -hmm. and then like singing out your prayers. And Mm -hmm. then it became like just an ability to share my context and my story to whoever would listen. Yeah. And, um, yeah. 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 And there. I could go longer because I'm long winded. <laughs> I would say the same thing five times, <laughs> slightly different ways. So once you know, gosh, I feel like our ice cream is just crazy to, uh, it's very good eat. though. Thank you. I know. It's so delicious. It just makes you feel warm inside, even though it's cold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so once you have your reason why, and you kind of like, I mean, even if you, like, had to write it out or whatever, just think about it in your mind. You know what you want to do. You know why you're doing it. The next thing is to plan out. And so by that, I mean you figure out social media-wise. Like, do you want to put only your videos on Facebook? Do you want to put them on YouTube and Instagram? Do you want to promote yourself in, like, all these different avenues? Do you not want to use anything other than YouTube at all? Mm -hmm. Like, it's finding what fits you and what you're doing because I think in different arenas whether you're doing music or gaming or beauty or focusing more on fashion home stuff or even vlogging like Mm -hmm. it's such a wide variety of things that you can do and each thing I think has different ways in which you can be very useful each social media has different ways in which it can really help you and so definitely knowing that in your branding Mm -hmm. not saying that your branding has to be the pristine newest coolest thing ever but having something that's cohesive and people like recognize there's a term that they were like synchronicity yeah but if possible and it's really like the planning part is effective i mean on one hand you want to catch the wave mm-hmm. so there's this feeling like I, I can't just be planning for 10 years and try to launch it because there'll be something different than youtube by that time like yeah. 10 different things different than youtube oh yeah so yeah you do need to be we, we do need to be intuitive and watching the trends and jump on them and take some risks mm-hmm. however and i don't know where the line is but planning is essential too so that you don't launch into something and then fumble and then expect to be able to to regain people's attention again Mm -hmm. because i mean there's so many options out there so if you 
if you launch you put all this energy into launching your youtube channel and then and go find me on instagram and here and here and then you realize that you didn't sync them like use the same handle or Mm -hmm. or you were doing really broadly different things and then like six months in you decide you're totally changing your mind Mm -hmm. that's not it's not the end of the world but that's not energy and time and resources and an audience that you can necessarily get back. Mm-hmm. Or we're talking about how like when you launch something, just mm-hmm. make sure it's not that it's going to be perfect because everything's in process. Like yeah. she's working out and trying to like hone in and narrow down exactly how she wants to use her channel. Mm-hmm. I'm still making tweaks to my channel all the time too. So it's not saying it's going to be at its best and peak and not need any adjustments. Mm-hmm. But your main, I don't even, I guess it would be different for everyone. You gotta know what you like. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. I know yeah. if it's you. So, social media branding, continuity is very important. Equipment. So, mm-hmm. the basics are a camera, of course, some kind of video recording item, whether that is your phone, your tablet, your laptop, mm-hmm. your camera, DSLR or not. Something to record, and also a tripod. And, you know, you can get a super fancy one you can get a plain jane one i think mine's just an amazon tripod like yeah. nothing fancy um and the camera that i use is a nikon d300 3300 and specifically you just want to know what kind of camera you want because like so i got this camera because it has the viewfinder on the side and i knew because i was just gonna do a lot of videos that <laughs> involved my face yep. and looking at me you don't want to see what others are gonna see exactly instead of recording it and being like oh shoot that looks horrible but some still happens for me (laughs) even though i watch it and i watch it back later i'm like oh yeah ew or just like oh that's blurry yeah that's blurry i didn't focus it yeah not at all so yeah that's totally something to be (laughs) totally aware of whether or not you need that some cases you'll need like lighting equipment as you can see a little bit um I'm very grateful to have like good lighting where I live, so I just have to use natural lighting. But mm-hmm. you use whatever works. Some people use the ring lights, diva lights. Mm-hmm. Some people just don't care and just do their thing, and it works. So you know, find whatever fits and suits you. And then supplies. So like, if you're doing natural hair videos, to buy the products you need. If you're doing Music videos is good to have the actual instrument. And yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I was about like, well, I don't think I need anything. Yeah, you, you might need the instrument for access to. And then... Or microphones. Microphones, even, maybe. yeah. And a lot of it, I would say if you were starting five, seven, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, access to equipment is a lot... There's a lot more for affordable prices these days. Way more. So, and obviously it's going to be an investment in pieces that I use now I didn't start with, that I, I saved tip money from live gigs, or when I started my Patreon, I put money away specifically for investment in better gear. Mm-hmm. So That's how you got Bear, right? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I got my electric guitar. But I feel like more and more these days, you can find stuff for your podcast, for your YouTube channels, whether it be music or hair or makeup and lifestyle, that are... Um, they're built specifically like they're targeting directly at YouTubers. Yeah. Um, so really quick, efficient ways. I know Focus Right just came out with this or Blue. Like I have a Bluebird Blue mic now, a condenser mm. mic that I use to my interface, and it's a great quality. Mm-hmm. But they just came out with one. It's a little bit cheaper, um, portable, mm-hmm. um, has a direct input into your laptop, so That's it's really a USB based mic, mm-hmm. and they crafted it specifically for people doing this kind of stuff. That's perfect, actually. So, yeah, so I just feel like, there, especially if you're getting started now, yes, maybe you feel like you're starting later than others, but you do have resources more widely available marketed directly at YouTubers. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. That's very nice. Also, don't mind that noise. It's my neighbors upstairs. Yes, they're fighting. So once you've gotten everything, the next thing is just start filming. Mm-hmm. I think... It's important to be yourself. I think everyone says that. Again, a cliche, (laughs) but it's very true. Like, there's some days where I'm just chill and just very almost, not monotone, but just, I'm not the excitable, bubbly, like, oh 
my god, guys, let's go do this. It's going to be so exciting. There's some people that naturally are like that. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I think people can see through that immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to just be yourself because I think that's what makes YouTube so great is that we have such a wide variety of personalities and people. And that gives the audience a lot more to look at and listen to where someone might not be your cup of tea, but you can appreciate their work because they're being themselves and they're Mm -hmm. like actually doing the thing like there's definitely some people who are like mm, i don't really care for them or their content necessarily but i'm impressed by your hustle exactly <laughs> like there's just so many different kinds of hustle out there yeah. that you know yours fits out there and there are people that are interested in you and what you do like i mean everyone has their own quirks and things that they love and things that you know yeah. and be kind gracious of unique to with them. yourself very so, gracious and yeah. i'm seeing this maybe more for my personality type i mm. watching jackie's videos even the ones that she started with Michael years ago, there's definitely <laughs> like an ability to kind of like cameras on, attention to the camera. Yeah, I'm impressed by that because I'm like, how do I how do I improve my ability to communicate via camera? Which is strange because right now we're talking to something that's not moving. Oh and yeah, that, and you're not responding back to us. Not at it's all. It's weird. I don't know whether to look at the that or like there's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's strange and it's odd. And you're like, how do I get better at that? But also not just lose. Who I am because I don't want to mm-hmm. create this persona unless that's the intent behind the channel yeah that I can't sustain there'll be times where I'll be like hey guys and I'll sit back and be like that's weird yeah like that's that's not, not natural so then I'll look at like five or six in the beginning just hey everyone hey folks welcome back yeah and it's all weird and odd and I felt stupid at first but then having over time realizing I need to be gracious with myself I'm trying to figure out how to do this how to rep- represent myself honestly but also just do a better job at communicating into a camera mm-hmm. that's gonna be on youtube so yeah laugh at yourself oh my gosh yes. edit things out try things again don't get full of yourself but you can watch yourself in a mirror and say what does it look like when i talk and i hold my face like this or yeah. if i wave or not just odd things that you don't think about until you see it on camera and you think that's not how i wanted to represent myself mm-hmm. but you've never been forced to analyze how yeah. you communicate um but yeah so be patient but yes just be gracious i think that's a really good just like overall when you start your youtube channel be gracious be willing to learn be willing to grow Mm -hmm. and so little some (laughs) (laughs) see (laughs) be gracious exactly (laughs) all right some little tips to i guess help you along the way Mm -hmm. i think Absolutely, one of the number one things that people want to know is how to get subscribers. And the thing is, slow and steady wins the race, in my (laughs) book and what I think. Um, I think it's absolutely true. There's, you know, a saying in the Proverbs where it's like something that's easily gained is easily lost. And so I believe it's just with anything, whether that's money, whether that's with people who follow you, whatever. I think we, we put so much... We put so much stock into numbers without really looking at content and without looking at the journey of the process. I feel like that's so much more beautiful and so much more um, just full of just life and lessons. I think that's so much more full than the actual destination. And so, um, you know, you might get five subscribers who are like your mom, your dad, your grandma. (laughs) And your mom's second account. Exactly. And then your teacher (laughs) who like, I don't know, for your teacher from kindergarten who just like knows the family. Oh, Jackie's doing this. Or Bo's doing this. Thanks. How do I I make a million subscribers and monetize all my videos? Well, the easy way is to buy them. (laughs) (laughs) But we don't do that. Instead, you can just put out good content and have people follow you. And that's the best way because those followers actually last a long time and don't get deleted by YouTube. So, absolutely, I would say that the best thing to do is to just grow with your channel. To kind of realize the things that are easily earned are also easily lost. And to, I don't know, let your work speak for itself. I don't like the whole thing of the whole subscribe for subscribe. Like, oh. you scratch my back, I scratch yeah. yours. Yeah. Like, I and I, I think I always thought that that, that was like a personal preference. But the more, mm-hmm. I mean, even hearing Jackie say that, there's. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm yeah. talking about the people who will visit my channel and then leave mm-hmm. in the comments. There's no like, you don't only really feel like you, they actually listened to any any of it or watched it, but they just uh, comment like, oh, I did a similar song or cover, and then they'll mm-hmm. put their link. And I mean that. That can get you some subscribers, um, but I feel like it already sets a tone for I'm not here to to listen or participate either. Yeah, I'm just here to kind of uh, 
moot some yeah. of your listeners. Um, so, I, I mean, there are really practical things that you can do to be strategic in mm-hmm. growing your channel.、Mm-hmm. Everything from regular releases, because it creates the expectation that there's going to be regular content. So,、mm-hmm. it's worthwhile to subscribe、mm-hmm. and to press whatever you said, the bell. Yeah, hitting、What's、the、called? bell notification and letting them know that. Yeah. You know. So, if you have a regular time that you upload your videos and have them ready, it just makes more sense to subscribe because you're g o i n g to know,、mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to know when she's released a new video.、Mm-hmm. So, there's that. There's what we talked about, like creating some continuity between your social media so that when they see you doing something、mm-hmm. on Instagram, that there's a direct correlation to your YouTube channel or having、exactly. the link provided there. Yep. So, I mean, there's still, yeah, there's strategic things you can do to inc- increase your subscribers,、mm-hmm. like collaborations. Um, with people like other artists or creators or people you respect. So, all of those strategies, none of them replace the good content. Yeah. So, you should do all those things, but if your content is not worthwhile, then you might pick up some subscribers, but retaining them will be really difficult.、Mm-hmm. And I、opinion. think a good way to know whether your, your content kind of measures up is to just pay attention to your community. Um, and I also kind of I've heard this from another business owner here、um, where I live, where they're talking about someone else who makes the same similar items or sells similar products. And they said, community, not competitors. And I like that idea where we're here as a community. And I know I'm, I'm not naive enough to think that everyone here has great intentions for everybody else and is really encouraging、What? everyone to win and be great and wonderful <laughs> and not take everything for themselves. We're not naive in that. And at the same time, I'm also not foolish to kind of make an enemy out of everyone. That makes no sense. It is also a waste of my time.、Mm-hmm. So I like to think of other natural hair people as my community. I learn so much、mm-hmm. from the people that I watch. And my thing is, I'm very, very, very careful about making sure that. When I say things, I know personally for myself what I'm saying. And if it is someone else's like, information or、mm-hmm. someone else's tips, I reference them and I link them.、Um, I, you know, I, just, I make sure that they get a piece of the pie too because I didn't get where I'm at by myself. And also at the same time, I think I'm also very genuine to my content and what I do. And I know my target when I'm. What I'm aiming for. And so, with that, I stay genuine to myself and I'm not a copycat. And so, I think it's good to like understand that, yes, in a community, you do end up saying similar things.、Mm-hmm. And at the same time, everyone else has their own twist and their own perspective and their own end goal. No, I agree.、Mm-hmm. I, and I don't know where the line is, but in this, but looking at other creators as inspiration and helping you grow in your creative process. But also not veering off to the other end of the spectrum where you start comparing yourself to, to the point that you are paralyzed or crippled to create your own content. So, yeah, find, find people doing something similar to you、mm-hmm. and then try to figure out what you can pick up from their practice or from their,、um, the way they present themselves that could better your practice.、Mm-hmm. But then spend some time trying to figure out what differentiates you from them.、Mm-hmm. Because if you just compare yourself, I mean, that's a. Yeah. That's a scary place to be. And that most of the times when I get caught up there, it really negatively impacts my ability to even yeah, follow through with what I feel like I'm supposed to do.、Mm-hmm. Um, but what makes you particular and different is going to be what attracts your, your listeners or your viewers or your community to you.、Mm-hmm. And also, another thing in the whole thing of which is like being yourself and being genuine, I think, is you know, always being willing to learn. And how we said with growing with your channel, there are a lot of online tutorials, not only on YouTube, but on Skillshare, on lynda.com, where Linda? it's. Linda?、Uh, Linda. Sorry, I'm learning a lot tonight. <laughs> Linda.com. <laughs> I'll put a little. I'll put Skillshare and lynda.com. <laughs> Linda is definitely way more specific to like Adobe programs. And so it's like, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator. I believe they do have Premiere tutorials too. Linda, you do have to pay for it. I believe you can get a good little、uh, discount with it through LinkedIn. But Linda is absolutely a great resource. Skillshare is a great resource because they don't only have just things like, I mean, if you want to learn hand lettering and like little things like that that you can add down to your channel,、um, they can teach that. But it also, like, they have people now who are teaching things about marketing and all that stuff. Check LinkedIn. I mean, there's 
50 million resources on like okay. how to market yourself, how to build your brand, how to do the whole <laughs> brainstorming sequence of where, you know, you take like little sticky notes and like write out, you know, different ideas or things you like and kind of flesh out uh, your thoughts and your ideas. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of tutorials online. Um, I think that's, you know, for the both of us, like we didn't start knowing everything. I've, you know, watched a million one YouTube, YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Not only to see how to do stuff, but I just watched people's content to see their results and to kind of see, okay, like, what layout do I like? Do I want a busy background? Do I want a plain color? Mm -hmm. Do I want this? Do I want people to look at me straight in the face or do I want it through a mirror? Those are just little things that, you know, when you start making your own videos, you really start noticing the details and then figuring out how to do that for yourself. I mean... You've done that a lot better than I have. I mean, I feel like the mm -hmm. way I started using YouTube... It was literally like a public, oh, my arm, my arm. <laughs> like diary sharing of songs. Mm-hmm. So the aesthetic of my page and channel um, definitely took a back burner. It wasn't unimportant to me, but mm-hmm. I don't feel like I had at that point the time to make that my focus. But you still enough. sustained like that's the thing because you were consistent. Like you were mm-hmm. putting out content like a lot. And I think that's what I focused on is because you can't. Depending on what, if you work, mm-hmm. so I don't know if any of you are doing, planning on doing this full time, but if you work there, just naturally you have to prioritize what you're going to focus on. Yeah. You just can't do it all. Mm-mm. So, back burner was the like graphic design, like mm-hmm. layout of my page. It was definitely something I wanted to work on so that it was something attractive mm-hmm. and like even branding, but I think what I focused on at that point was just regularly releasing content and then as that started to because once you put the content up it's there Mm -hmm. so as that became more available to listeners then I kind of backtracked and started working on Mm -hmm. the image of it some of my old videos are pretty (laughs) they're rough they're rough there's so many classics oh I'm glad you call them classics that's a sweet way of putting (laughs) there's some that I just like I remember listening to over and over again like yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's very kind of you. But yeah, I think that's, you know, that's the thing that you kind of have to be aware of and just know your skill set. Be willing to collaborate with people. Yep. There's some people that, like, are more than willing to help you with a logo or help you with, you know, making your YouTube back page or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think even, like, that's the thing about YouTube that's changing now is that a year, two, three years ago, like, there wasn't that whole thing of focusing on brand and making it look a certain way. It was about putting out content Mm -hmm. and it was about being consistent. Now there's a little bit more of a schedule and because I think more bigger brands too are participating in YouTube. And it's funny because they're learning it. They're the opposite side where they're so overproduced. They're learning how to make something that's real and connects with people. Yeah, that is something too. It's like part of your brand is often your, it's your personality. Mm -hmm. That you, I mean, you want something that's, uh, coherent and there's continuity between it but if, if it loses its personality then it's something it might be great but it might be something else and not a YouTube channel yeah. there's a personality to a YouTube channel mm-hmm. that I feel like is essential for people there's a reason why they're on YouTube and not on Netflix or yeah. other platforms to watch movies or short films yep yeah anyway I think that is it uh, thank you so much, Bo. Thank you so much, Bobo, for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> for this bad dessert. timing. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're totally fine. But thank you for joining us for this dessert mukbang. My pleasure. <laughs> and if you guys have not already gone over to her channel, please go check it out. We will have a video that we did over with her. And it's just kind of like a TMI tag, mukbang. We're just talking and chilling and having some fun. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. My recommendation is when you watch that video is to also have food. Yes. Have food, eat, and watch. We didn't yes. eat so much because we were so full. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Comment down below. Leave any questions you might have for me or for Isabeau. Um, She has been in the game a little bit longer, and so she definitely has a good wealth of knowledge that she can give to you guys that I can't necessarily give, but I will do my best also to answer them. And yeah, we'll see you in our next videos. Make sure to subscribe. We're doing interpretive dance next time. Yes. (laughs) With ribbons and everything. (laughs) Anyway, I hope you guys have a great night. Talk to you later. Bye. I'm learning a lot right in this first 30 seconds. You didn't know about the bell? No. Yeah, no, they don't. The bell. Is that a recent shift? Yeah. No. Months, while, like...
It's been a while, but still. <laughs> You're like, it's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm like... Yeah. I have no advice for if you want to do something viral. Just, yeah, none. Shocking. I'm, I'm not a shocking. Funny. No, I'm not that funny. Involves someone falling. Yeah. And then someone saying something totally inappropriate in their sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and a sassy baby. A sassy baby? Yeah, a sassy baby in this one. <laughs> I know, sassy toddlers are in right now. <laughs> and that's it. Was that weird to watch someone be... <laughs> 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 he was like, oh my gosh, you're so good. That's all I get from Dyson is a finger.